Wow, what a way to start off the vlog. <laughs> hey fam, what's up? It's April. Welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. It is week two of the two of the Owls Magical Readathon. I'm having so much fun. I've already completed five books and five Owls prompts. I can't believe it. But I obviously just got out of the shower. Um, I'm just going to give a content warning because I'm about to talk about anxiety. So if that's triggering for you, I will leave a timestamp to when I stop talking about it. But here we go. I don't know what's happening to me. <laughs> These past few days, I have been feeling so, so anxious. If you guys didn't know, um, I have an anxiety disorder and it's been pretty under control uh, for the last few years with the help of medication. But I think this whole situation is just like finally catching up with me. And the fact that I haven't really left my house that much in the past like three weeks i don't know if it's like reminding me of back when i had agoraphobia but like i don't know i'm starting to feel just really anxious for no reason i mean obviously there are reasons to feel anxious right now but like even the smallest like social tasks are causing a lot of anxiety for me like um yesterday i had an appointment online with my midwives and for some reason I was anxious about that and now I have an online training session at work tomorrow and I don't know if that's what I'm anxious about because I'm so used to doing nothing these past few weeks that just like, I don't know, everything's making me anxious. So I've decided today is going to be a self-care day because I don't really have anything on today. I've made all of the scary phone calls that I needed to make already for the day. So I just took a shower, washed my face, washed my hair. That often makes me feel a little bit better and we're gonna read my book <laughs> which brings me to my next point my tbr for this week is basically rereading restore me and defy me and then reading the novellas in between those books and then reading imagine me when it finally arrives in the mail it was supposed to arrive last thursday but that's on like a normal <laughs> delivery schedule and you know obviously things aren't being delivered on time as much these days and I don't have an audiobook planned because the last audiobook I have left on my Luna on my monthly TBR is Any Duchess Will Do I think it is by Tessa Dare. It's available on Scribd and with my library but it's a four week wait with my library and Scribd has decided to limit my titles until the 12th so I'm thinking maybe we'll just pick out something random for my next audiobook or maybe while I'm playing Animal Crossing instead I might uh, watch some movies or some TV shows because I have a Disney Plus membership and a Netflix membership and I feel like I haven't really been getting my money's worth lately because I've just been reading instead of like doing a variety of things. So last night I actually watched Wreck-It Ralph on Disney Plus. I had 50 movies slash TV shows in my watch list and I messaged my friend Kara and told her to send me a number 1 through 50. She picked number 27 which just happened to be Wreck-It Ralph. I've watched it before but I just re-watched it last night while um, playing Animal Crossing and it was really relaxing. I might do that as well. Maybe pick out a couple of things to watch this week. Maybe some comforting re-watches we could do and today I'm also gonna make one of my favorite comfort foods Vegemite scrolls so we're gonna do that I think I'm gonna do a face mask right now while I start my reread of restore me it looks like I might have annotated this but like not as hectic as I usually annotate stuff so I might add stuff to it while I'm reading it or maybe I just tabbed it I have no idea yeah it looks like I just tabbed it so I guess uh, maybe we'll annotate this as well and it's just gonna be a nice calm relaxing day I've already done like all of my daily Animal Crossing things this morning so I probably won't play Animal Crossing um, for the rest of the day but yeah I just finished editing last week's vlog so I'll be uploading that with a face mask and reading my book let's go <laughs> Thank you. 
sir. I'm 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 trying I'm trying to read. Excuse me. Excuse me. I I, I, I oh, oh, oh. <laughs> excuse me. Sir, could you please move? Oscar help. Let's go. <laughs> ah, good morning. It's Wednesday morning and I basically just finished this entire book in one sitting last night. Well, not last night. Yesterday. I finished it last night. I ended up annotating way more than I thought I would. There were just so many things that I wanted to take note of especially there's so many quotes that can be related back to what's happening in our world right now and there's so many quotes that I relate to in regards to anxiety like oh my gosh I don't think this is like a full five star read it's not very action packed this one it's more about the characters and how they're coping with what happened in the first three books but we introduced so many new characters oh my gosh Nazira is my favorite and yeah four stars I I know lots of people don't enjoy the second Shadow Me trilogy but I really do I think it's just really fun because she took it in a direction that just like no one expected like you thought it was all over but it's only just beginning. So yeah, four stars. And then last night before I went to sleep, I read Shadow Me, the novella. It was the first time I read it. It's from Kenji's point of view. And I liked it. I think if I had read it before I read Defy Me for the first time, I would have liked it a lot more because a lot of things are revealed. Um, shocking things about the plot are revealed but those are also revealed in Defy Me but um, I blame Amazon for that for not having these novellas up for the longest time so I couldn't access them like there was no way I could read Shadow Me before I read Defy Me there was just no way so yeah I gave that one three stars I mean a lot of it is just like repeated scenes from Restore Me just from Kenji's point of view which I mean was interesting I guess but like not 100% necessary in my opinion so yeah I gave that three stars and today I have to leave in like 20 minutes <laughs> to take Oscar to the vet and then I have online training from 12 to 2 and then after that I will probably just read Defy Me in one sitting again and then if I have time I'll read Reveal Me the next novella which I've never read before. My copy of Imagine Me still hasn't arrived but that's kind of understandable I think delivery times um, for the book depository are like five days late so I mean my copy is five days late now so it could arrive soon. Hello, it is Thursday. So I took Oscar to the vet yesterday. They said he's getting a lot better and we are working on ways to manage his illness and we're just gonna keep lowering the dosage until it goes away. So as expected, last night I finished my reread of Defy Me. Also, sorry if you can hear the washing machine in the background. There it goes. <laughs> um, this, I actually lowered my rating. I originally gave this 4 out of 5 stars, but I gave it 3.5 stars this time around. This book is just, it's basically just torture porn, really. I forgot how messed up this book is. Like, oh my gosh. But like, it still has me so hooked. And I can't wait to read Imagine Me. If my copy would just arrive, that would be fantastic. So yes, I finished this, 3.5 stars. Then I also read Reveal Me, which was the last novella I had to read in this series. And I gave that three stars. It's also from Kenji's point of view. And we do find out about a situation that's sort of, I'm assuming, going to kick off the next book. But it was also kind of a sad novella because Kenji's dealing with a lot of stuff mentally 
but like Nazira. Oh, did I mention how much I love her? Because oh my gosh, I love her. So yeah, I gave that three stars. And looking at my owl's TBR, I am running out of books to read. I, I've read nine books in nine days. Yeah. So I still have to read a book for Arithmancy, which is Imagine Me. I still have to read a book at night for Astronomy. I actually am changing this. I was going to use The Silence of Bones for this, but it doesn't come out until the 21st. And I'm worried with the delivery delays that it might not arrive in time. So I decided a couple of nights ago, actually, I just forgot to tell you, um, on Audible at the moment, um, the new audiobook for Tales of Beetle the Bard is free for Audible members. And it has a bunch of narrators like Ivana Lynch and Jude Law. Like it has some great narrators that are from the actual movie franchise. And I've listened to two stories so far, both at night, just as I was like trying to get my mind calm enough to go to sleep. And they're so cool because they also have like sound effects and it's a really cool audiobook. So I'm using that for my book to read at night for astronomy. Then we have Defense Against the Dark Arts, a book set at sea or on the coast. And for that, I have Any Duchess Will Do. But I have to wait till the 12th, like I said, for Scribd to get their shit together. And then for Divination, for my random number generator book, in my TBR, that ended up being Of Curses and Kisses by Sandia Manon. So I'm gonna start this maybe today, if Imagine Me doesn't arrive today. But I also started another audiobook because, you know, you know me, once I finish an audiobook, I need a new one because I'm constantly listening to it while I'm doing stuff around the house and playing Animal Crossing. And I find I just like fly, I'm flying through audiobooks this month. So um, a hold actually came in yesterday at my library for Hunting Prince Dracula by Kerry Maniscalco. This is the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper. And it's a book that's on my physical TBR. So I was like, this is perfect. My hold came in at just the right time. I can get a book off my TBR. And I'm already 200 pages into it. I mean, it is like 2.30 in the afternoon. So I have had a lot of time to listen to this today because I haven't done anything today, but it's fun. Um, I have a feeling it's probably gonna get the same rating as the first book, like a 3.5. I don't know, like it's, it's a fun series, but it's not like amazing to me. And I don't really know why that is because it has like lots of elements that I love I mean it's historical we have great banter between the two main characters and I'm invested in their relationship so I'm like why am I just like meh about this series I don't know the first one was really predictable at the moment I don't like I have a suspect in mind but we'll see what happens I could be totally wrong so that would be amazing if I was totally wrong, actually. So yeah, my audiobook and my physical book for the rest of the week. Here we go. Let's do this. Well, also Imagine Me. Speaking of, why don't we go and check my letterbox for Imagine Me? And fingers crossed that it's there. Gosh, this means I have to put pants on. Life is hard. Oh, that was a hike. These days, I'm finding it so hard to just walk. <laughs> like, my lower back is so sore. It could just be that the mailman hasn't come today. I, I don't really know what time he usually comes. I just know that when I check it at like 5 p.m., there's mail in there sometimes. <laughs> but anyways, um, because I'm running out of books to read on my TBR, I have made a huge list of potential options that I could read <laughs> for the rest of this month because I just have a feeling I am going to read a crap ton of books this month. So this list basically consists of audiobooks I have on hold that should be coming through in the next few weeks, um, short things that I could read, the rest of the books on my TBR, I could also potentially do my reread and annotation of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because I've been putting that off for months. But as this is the third year of the Owls, it would be fitting if I did that. I don't know. 
we'll see what happens. But for now, I think I'm going to play a little bit more of Animal Crossing. I want to vi visit some people's islands and I'll keep listening to my audiobook. So I thought I'd do a little um, tour of my island on Animal Crossing. So if you don't care about Animal Crossing, I'll leave a timestamp and you can skip. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you. And it's currently raining. How nice. So this is my little house. Let's go inside. This is my living room. Wow, so cute. This is my kitchen. Wow. This is my adorable bedroom, and this is my pet tortoise we love. And then on this side is my bathroom. So next to my house, I'm trying to make a pink and white flower garden kind of thing. This, this side looks amazing. Um, I'm trying to get one more of these pink hyacinths so I can put them here and get rid of these red ones. I need more pink roses, but yeah. That's uh, what I'm working on. We have a little outdoor pool thing over there. Some plants on a table. This is my little campfire area. Such fun. Down here is where you enter my island. You got resident services. What are you doing, puddles? Wow, thanks Puddles. Over here is my little uh, fountain with roses surrounding it. I copied this off Aldo, who is Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads' boyfriend. They are my parents, I love them so much. But I visited both of their islands and I got this idea from Aldo. So I'm still growing some black roses. And then over here we have my orchard, which has all of my fruits. And obviously because I'm in the southern hemisphere, the trees are starting to turn brown for autumn. Such fun. Then if you go up here, we have the little shops, I guess. Uh, we have Able Sisters, the museum, and Nook's Cranny. And then over on this side, there's not much going on over here. I do have um, my campsite, though. That's about it. <laughs> And then up here on the beach, on this side, I have a little uh, hangout area, which looks like a mess at the moment. <laughs> okay, let's go to the other side, and then we'll go up. Okay, so on this side, we have another kind of orchard. Not really, it just has my pear trees, because pears are my island's fruit. And then I have a little graveyard, just for funsies. And then up here we have the little playground. Super cute. And then down here I have a lighthouse. There it is. Which is pretty cool. Okay, so if you go back over to where the shops are, which is over here, and you go up, this is where all of my villagers live. All of their houses are along here. This was really annoying. I wanted to fit another house in here, but they were like, there's no room. I'm like, how? How is there no room? A house would fit perfectly in there. Very annoying. Anyway, we have more houses. We have a little forest. Um, this is my 10th house that's going up tomorrow. And I found a cute villager to go in it, so I'm excited. There's another house. And then up here, these are just spare flowers. Nobody cares about those. <laughs> Here's where I'm doing some flower breeding um, for pansies and lilies. But the main flower breeding is on the other side, which I'm very um, proud of. So I'll show you. It's up here. So this is where I'm working on the majority of my flower breeding. And here are just like a crap ton of spare flowers. <laughs> And then down here we have another little foresty bit. And that's literally my whole island. <laughs> it's not very exciting. But I'm pretty proud of how it's going, you know. So yeah, I will link my switch friend code in the description because I often open my gates and it's nice to have friends. So yeah, that's it. <laughs>
Hello. So we are in the library because Lucas is taking a nap. But I have a lot to update you on as per usual because all I'm doing is reading. So last night I finished Hunting Prince Dracula. I listened to the entire thing in one day. And I have pretty much the same feelings as the first book. It's just... I don't know what it is about it, but I just am not in love with this series. I think it's really fun and I like the romance, but I just like, I'm not hooked. The good thing about this one though is I didn't predict who the killer was like I did in the first book, so that's good. So yeah, I ended up giving this 3.5 stars. I think I will continue on with the series, but I'm not going to buy um, the rest of them. I'm just going to listen to them. Um, as audiobooks from my library. So I read that and then last night I also finished listening to The Tales of Beetle the Bard which I mentioned I was listening to and it was phenomenal. I mean the first time I read it I also have this is like my original copy. <laughs> Look how cute. Uh, yeah five stars. I love this collection so much. My only complaint is that there aren't more stories to devour. I just I love these stories so much. My favourite story is probably Babbity Rabbity and her cackling stump. My least favourite story is probably The Warlock's Hairy Heart. Um, but after listening to the entire audiobook, I went and looked through the illustrations for the illustrated edition, which is illustrated by Chris Riddle. And these illustrations are just stunning. My favourite one is probably the one on the cover, which is of these three stunning witches like hello i just think chris riddle has such a unique art style that really complements the wizarding world um so yeah five stars love tales of the other bard and that completed my i think it was astronomy prompt to read a book only at night and i don't think this completed any prompts so it is now friday evening it's almost 6 p.m and I haven't read anything really all day. I played Animal Crossing, I filmed and edited a video, I hung out with Lucas. I, I really haven't done anything and I woke up pretty late. I woke up at like 11 a.m. Oh, I also forgot to mention, be right back. Um, I tried to start reading of Curses and Kisses. This is for the prompt to use a random number generator. I can't remember what subject that's for, but um, in my TBR, this is the book that came up and I just am not feeling this book. <laughs> I didn't realize it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I am just so over Beauty and the Beast retellings. I feel like I've read so many recently. And this actually has like a kind of a low rating on Goodreads, it's like 3.52 or something. I was expecting it to be a lot higher. But I don't know, I'm just not in the mood. I don't know why. So I'm just gonna put that down for now. And then I decided, well, I can just use my random number generator again and try something else. So I got the list out that I made of all the books I could potentially read for the rest of the month. And first, Imagine Me came up and I was like, well, I can't read that because it still hasn't arrived. And then Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban came up. Also, sorry about that dog shush and i was like yes perfect i'm gonna reread this i got all ready by writing down what all my colors mean so i could annotate it and then uh chloe from books with chloe announced that her jamie and caitlin are doing a 24-hour harry potter readathon on monday where they read as many harry potter books as they can in 24 hours so i'm gonna save this for monday and i figured Let's do the random number generator again and see what comes up. Let's see, I could read one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's like five options that I could read on this list. The rest like aren't available to me yet. Okay, one to five, two. Oh, I don't really want to read this, but... I guess we're doing it. <laughs> so the book that came up was The Hope of Elantris, which is a novella. Wait, why is the Emperor's Soul before The Hope of Elantris in this? I think The Hope of Elant Elantris takes place after Elantris and the Emperor's, Soul t the Emperor's Soul takes place before, maybe? The Hope of Elantris, it's actually, 
Okay, it says this story takes place after and contains major spoilers for Elantris. Let's see what it says for Empress Soul. Nothing. Great. Okay, let's just, let's do it. Let's read The Hope of Elantris. It's really not that long. It's 19 pages long. We could totally do that, fam. Okay. <laughs> For my next audiobook, um, a hold came in for my library for Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, which is a book that I received in an Owlcrate box. I'm just sort of listening to audiobooks as my holds come in for them. I mean, there are quite a few that are available now, but like, this helps me to choose. Like, if I see that they have a waiting time, I just press request and then when they come in and i'll read them anyways so i have read chapter one so i'm on page 18 love that for me this is an asian inspired fantasy about a seamstress who i believe dresses up as a man to become the imperial tailor for the prince and it's like some sort of competition to be the imperial tailor which sounds really really fun so far it's um quite sad the first chapter, she's lost two brothers to the war that's been happening in her country. This is Chinese inspired. Wow, Elizabeth Lim went to Harvard and Juilliard. What the heck? That's so cool. Sorry, my battery just died. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which Asian culture this is about, but I will figure that out. So these are the plans for this evening and we'll see how we go. <laughs> I'll definitely finish that Elantra story tonight and then I might start Beauty and the Blacksmith which is the next novella I need to read that comes before the Tessa Dare book I was going to start on the 12th in two days. Fair. I think that's the plan. Hope of Elantra, Spin the Dawn, Beauty and the Blacksmith, yeah. Can't go to the gym? Just use your dog. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. It's Saturday. I woke up like an hour and a half ago. It's 11.30 a.m. I had breakfast, played Animal Crossing, and watched a bunch of YouTube videos. So I'm going to talk to you about what I read last night. And then we're going to pick something to watch on Netflix today because I've decided Every week I'm going to watch one thing on Netflix and one thing on Disney Plus and that will help with, you know, self-care and it'll be a great time. So, firstly, what I read last night, I read The Hope of Elantris and I ended up loving this short story. I gave it four out of five stars. It's very short um, and it takes place at the climax of the book Elantris, but in the book Elantris we're in a different place. And in this novella, we get to find out what happened back in Elantris while that climax was happening. And I loved it because we followed this teenage girl who was in charge of looking after the children. And during the climax, she has to protect the children. And I just, I really loved her character because I could relate like being a childhood educator. And the, if you read the postscript afterwards, um, the reason why Brandon Sanderson wrote this short story was just really heartwarming and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. And I listened to more of Spin the Dawn and I'm now on page 92. So I'm almost like a quarter of the way through this, it says on Goodreads, and I'm really enjoying it so far as well. And I looked it up, it is based on Chinese culture, so all the characters are Chinese and its own voices, which is great. And then, um, before I went to sleep, I started... Oh, here comes Oscar. Hang on, I just gotta let the cats in. Hi, buddy. Did you have fun? Blackie, do you want to come in? Sorry, outside is a mess at the moment. I really need to clean up. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Oh, no, don't lick it. I'm gonna have to put your cone back on if you do that, buddy. But it looks so much better. I know it still looks pretty bad, but it was so much worse, guys. But he hasn't been licking it too much, so I've been giving him a little bit of freedom with the cone because, you know, stress is also a cause for this, and I don't want him to keep being stressed. But you're such a good boy. 
You're such a good boy. Anyways, as I was saying, um, I started reading Beauty and the Blacksmith. I was gonna read it on Scribd on my phone, but then I realized I bought this like a year ago or something on my Kindle. I love past me. Wow, thinking ahead. And I think I'm like 6% of the way through that because it is, it's not like the shortest of novellas. It's like 230 pages or something. And I was pretty sleepy when I started it. So I only managed to get 6% of the way in, but we're following Diana from the Spindle Cove series. And I'm guessing it's gonna be her love story. Love to see it. Anyways, so on Netflix, I have a total of 140 things in my list. So we're gonna do a random number generator. If it's a series, um, I'll just like start the series and we'll see how we go. Or if something comes up that, you know, I'm not in the mood for, or if it's like a rewatch that I don't wanna rewatch right now, we can do it again. One, 140, generate, 45. Okay, let's count. Okay, I landed on Pinocchio, which is a K-drama, let's look. Actually, I'm not that interested in that one. I might actually remove that from my watch later playlist. Let's do this again. <laughs> 95, are you kidding me? Oh my God, I landed on The Haunting of Hill House. Okay, I do wanna watch this. It's a TV show. Let's see how many things are out. I think it's just one season, 10 episodes. Okay, okay, we could do that. I think Whitney from Wee Novels loves this show and that's why I added it to my list. So, it says, The Haunting of Hill House, episode one. While investigating a ghost story for his latest novel, a skeptical Stephen receives a call from his sister that triggers a chain of fateful events. Ooh, spooky. Okay, I just watched like the first 10 minutes, like the, the intro. I think it's too scary for me right now. It'd probably be fine if Lucas was sleeping in the bed with me, but He's been sleeping on the couch because he's had a bit of a cough. So we're just trying to be safe. But I think it's a bit too scary for me right now. And I think I need something way more comforting than that. That was probably a bad idea. And also, it's a book that I own that I haven't read. So I should probably read the book first anyways. Because I usually like to do that. So actually, I'm going to make like a condensed list of options of things that I really feel like watching or things that are comforting. And then we'll do the random number generator thing again. you be any more adorable you're so cute oh my gosh good morning it is sunday i was totally right about the haunting of hill house <laughs> last night i woke up at like 3 a.m and was scared out of my mind that the bent neck lady was like watching over the side of my bed. So I got up and turned the lights on and just cuddled with Luna. It would take a ton of bricks to wake up Lucas, so I didn't wake up Lucas. Um, but I ended up watching all of season one of Elves, which is this adorable kids show. It's actually made by the same animation company that made Avatar and Legend of Korra. You can see like the similarities in the animation style and it is just like everything i ever wanted like oh, if this was out when i was a kid i would have been obsessed 
This is exactly the type of fantasy that I like with like the enchanted forests and the dragons and the elves and it's just, oh, I love it. So there's only one season out so far and it was only eight episodes and they were only 25 minutes each. That's why I was able to finish it all in one day. But it was exactly what I needed. It was so comforting and I just... I loved it. I loved it so much. I highly recommend it. I also finished Beauty and the Blacksmith last night and I also really enjoyed that. I gave it four out of five stars. We love a man who lets a woman take the reins and make her own decisions about her life. We love to see it. I also listened to more of Spin the Dawn. I am 175 pages in now. I think I'm like 44% of the way through. I'm loving this book guys. It is so good. So I'm gonna aim to finish that today. It's already 1 p.m. though, but um, I reckon I can do it. I think I only have like two and a half hours left of the audiobook on double speed, so we can definitely do it. But for now, Lucas and I are gonna make a cake together. Continuing on with the self-care theme for this vlog. So yeah, let's go make this cake. One egg. <laughs> Lucas is refusing to be in the video, so I apologize. Two eggs. <laughs> How many do we need? Three. Three, Three eggs. eggs. We're making this vanilla cake and we're gonna put strawberry icing on it. And we can all we also have strawberries. We can put strawberries on the top. Good idea. Okay. Wow. Wow. It's so lumpy. <laughs> oh no, I should have sifted the powder in. Wow. Why am I so bad at life? <laughs> Look at it! It's beautiful! Beautiful! Wow! wow. It's, a bit, it's a bit misshapen, but it's made with love. Good morning. It is Monday, so it's time to wrap up this vlog. I read nine things this week. I didn't realize how much I read until I was getting ready to wrap up this vlog. What the heck? So let's just get into what I read, what I rated them, and what subjects they counted for for the outs. So first this week, I reread Restore Me by Taha Damafi. I gave this four out of five stars. And this was for Charms to read a book with a white cover. And this was for my career. I think I've finished all of the prompts for my career. Yeah, I have. What the heck? <laughs> then I read Shadow Me, which I gave three out of five stars. And that counted for potions shrinking solution to read a book under 150 pages then i reread it defy me and i gave this 3.5 stars this was for care of magical creatures to read a book with a beak on the cover i don't know if you can see it but in the eye there is actually a bird then i read reveal me which i also gave three stars and which could also count for the potions prompt then i listened to hunting prince dracula by kerry menescalco i gave this 3.5 stars and this didn't count for any of the prompts but i just need Need audiobooks to listen to all the time so <laughs> then I listened to the new audiobook of the tales of Beetle of Bard gave this five stars I love this collection so dearly and this was for astronomy to read a book only at night then I read the hope of Elantris by Brandon Sanderson I gave that four stars and that was for divination to use a random number generator then I read Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare another novella which I gave four out of five stars. This could count towards Defense Against the Dark Arts to read a book set at sea or on the coast but I'm using the next book in the series for that. I don't know but I've basically I've completed that prompt basically. <laughs> and then last night I finished Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim and I loved this. I gave this four out of five stars. It's very unique and this didn't count towards any of the prompts but like I said, audiobooks. I just want to mention that the actual competition to become the Imperial Tailor only takes up like a third of the story. The rest of the story is kind of a quest adventure to find these like magical items and she's going to weave those magical items into three dresses and basically it's a very dangerous task and she goes on this quest with the royal enchanter who is basically like the the emperor's magic dude <laughs> and it is very romance heavy so if you hate fantasy books that are heavy on the romance you might not enjoy this one but i loved it it was so good i am a bit stingy with my five star ratings though 
so this gets a four stars and those are the nine things i read this week here are all the physical things i am so pleased with what i managed to read i can't believe it i have one prompt left if i don't count this for defense against the dark arts but i kind of want to because it's a full length book as opposed to a novella i just have arithmancy to read a book outside your favorite genre and i'm still planning on reading imagine me but i could potentially use another book i've already read for this like i could use hunting prince dracula because this is a mystery and mystery is not my favorite genre actually i think i'm gonna do that does this mean i've completed the owls <laughs> i actually think i'm gonna do that so um i've completed the owls <laughs> except for this what <laughs> So I think the rest of the month will consist of a lot of picking books out of my TBR jar, just reading random books that become available to me with my library, with audiobooks, maybe just catching up on things that I've been meaning to read for ages, reading a lot of short things, I don't know, we'll see how much we can read this month. But that is going to be it for this week's reading vlog. Oh, before I go, the cake was delicious. Okay. That's going to be it for this week's reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon in a new one. Goodbye. Look after yourselves.